I, I want one more um, feature, if you like, uh, from each of you about your own country. Um, I'd like to, um, to, to ask Kuma about the Sri Lankan side. I've had such a difficult time on one very difficult pitch at Headingley that, that England bowled. I mean, James Anderson in the last month has bowled as well in that style of bowling as I've seen anybody bowl in my whole life, including, you know, Marshall and, 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 and all those guys. He, he's bowled close to perfect now, I, I would argue. Um, so it's been difficult for the guys. Just very briefly, um, Sri Lanka's future, these young players, uh, um, tell us. Well, it's a lot has been said over the last two test matches uh, in Sri Lanka and here, and talking about two tier test matches and giving the two Sri Lankan tests as an example why Sri Lanka may not have, not need to be in that top tier. Um, some reporters at home um, writing, well, what's this side doing here? To me, I think the players on this tour are the best players that we have in Sri Lanka. And just because they've lost two test matches doesn't make them bad players. Um, this is also the first step, in my view, of a process that will take us a year and a year and a half to really build a side that believes in themselves and in each other and actually plays the brand of cricket that Sri Lanka is known for. It's not going to happen at Lords or maybe not in the next six months, but what I admire about these boys is that Having gone through all of that, faced all of that, they put up a great show in that last innings at Durham. Um, and also, I know for a fact, having played with some of these guys for a while and looking at the new players, that without a doubt, that they are the best suited to take Sri Lankan cricket forward. And no matter what anyone says, my, my belief in, in, in the players that we have out there representing Sri Lanka is extremely strong, and I will back them 100% to take Sri Lanka where they, where they have to go. So let's have, a, have this chat again in a year and a half. <laughs> Very good. Um, I, mean, with, with, with the, I would argue, probably, I, I'd need to research a bit, but with the four, perhaps the four most devastating and important consecutive strikes of a cricket ball, Carlos Brathwaite took away... Um, the World 2020 Trophy, a tournament that um, you had graced, your team had graced, um, as indeed had they. Uh, is, it, are moments like that things you learn from, or is that a bit of a myth of sport? Do you, do you regroup easily? Do you look back with any regrets? Would you do anything different? Can you give us just a minute or two on, on the moment and, and your thoughts in the Yeah, team? absolutely. I, I still, <laughs> still have nightmares about it. So. <laughs> no. Here, I think the thing that has to be said about the group of players that we have at the moment, uh, over the last 12 months, they've shown a huge amount of character. And that culminated in the, in the T20 World Cup final. We, we scored an, an average score on that wicket. It was a really good batting track. And to have the West Indies four down for, I think it was 40, really early on with the most dangerous men back in the sheds, I thought we were outstanding in getting to that position. Coming into the... 20th over the game, if you'd asked me if I thought I was going to win the game, I would have put my house on it. Um, ben Stokes had been outstanding right up until then, and he probably only bowled one ball, one bad ball, I should say, which was the first one. The next three he bowled actually weren't that bad of deliveries, and I've re-watched them and watched them and watched them, not out of pleasure, <laughs> but no. just to learn... If we can learn any from, from that, that will hold us in good stead in the Champions Trophy in 2017 or 2019 World Cup final. We want to learn as much as we can. So I think I'm incredibly proud of what we've achieved so far. I firmly believe that this is just the beginning of what I'm hoping is something special. I firmly believe that we have the players to achieve something special. And like any other side, gearing towards a World Cup. You want to build confidence and belief within the side, and certainly we've done that so far. Great. And Ben seems well. And I mean, I know he's injured right now, but he seems to have got over it. And he gone. is, absolutely. I mean, he's, he's, he's quite a realist. We've, we've chatted about it. We chatted about it immediately after. Um, and we've celebrated some great times together as a side. Ben has individually won us a lot of cricket games, both yeah. with bat, on, bat and ball. And he's quite honest and open about it, yeah. Oh, lots of you are out there. They were good shots. Um, and finally, the impact of rugby in New Zealand is well known. 
Um, cricket has always fought for centre stage and at times of late, under your leadership, has found centre stage, famously in the World Cup that didn't go your way in the final. Um, is that the norm now going forward, that New Zealand cricket has the chance to, to share some of that stage? Yeah, I think that's a really good question. I, cricket in New Zealand will never be what rugby in New Zealand is. Um, rugby, we're all brought up wanting to be All Blacks. That's, that's just the way our culture is. Everyone wants to be an All Black from the day that they, that they uh, can stand up. And um, The thing we worked out, I guess, is that you can't compete against that. You can't look at the All Blacks and say, right, what can we do with what, that the All Blacks do and try and bring that into our culture? Because they're a completely different organisation. They, they've got a winning percentage of 91%, 92%. Their playing numbers versus our playing numbers are extremely vast. Um, and rugby is a deeply ingrained culture in New Zealand. What we can do, though, is we can jump in the slipstream of what they've been able to achieve and cherry-pick a couple of the key things which are fundamental to us and our success as well. And I think we've been able to do that over the last little while. And some of those traits that I discussed before, the, uh, the hard-working, uh, hard humble, blue-collar nature of, um, of how we went about reorganising our team, is what the All Blacks are actually fundamentally um, known for. Even though they're, they're so successful, um, Richie McCaw is the last person out of the dressing room, the All Black captain. He's the one that cleans up, makes sure that, they, that that uh, change room is completely spotless. Their respect is phenomenal. Um, they play for one another um, and they, they personify the traits of New Zealand. We can take some aspects of that, but we'll never be the All Blacks. I think what is interesting as well is where, as, we're, as you're alluding to before, the synergy between England at the moment, Sri Lanka at the moment, and where New Zealand are. I think at times we've all been in the same positions. It was only a couple of years ago when Morgs and I were talking and I'd just been through a tough time. The New Zealand team had been through an incredibly tough time and then rolled into Morgs when he took over the captaincy. They went through a tough time. And where Sri Lanka is at the moment, they're going through a tough time. But it doesn't last forever, and I think that's where people need to realise that it's a long race. You need to trust in people. You need to support people, even though it's not the health in days. And you need to actually allow them the time and the effort to be able to, and the space to develop a team and a culture and judge them down the track. I don't think it's fair to judge a Sri Lankan team at the moment. I don't think that in the past it's been fair to judge some of the other teams, but over time they, they turn into something and I think that's what Morgs has done with, New, uh, with England and that's what Kane will do with, uh, with New Zealand and I'm sure Sri Lanka in time, the same will happen. Yeah. Okay, um, thank you. Um, yes. Yes, you can, sir, yeah. He, he, mentioned, <laughs> he mentioned both the All Blacks and the Black Caps, and I'm a little confused, but what I'd like to know is you had a vote on your flag. Did you have a referendum on the, the Black Cap, back, um, All Black business as well? No, but we should have. <laughs> This may offend slightly, but I don't think we should have a referendum for the flag, though. He should have just changed it, the Prime Minister. <laughs> it's, it's a wonderful flag, the one they proposed. Um, the black cap name is... Oh, it's commercial, but it is what it is now. I think, ultimately, we, we are proud of being New Zealanders, and we refer to ourselves as the New Zealand cricket team. Um, the All Blacks is a different, different beast altogether. Um, they're known around the world as the All Blacks. For us, we're known around the world as the New Zealand cricket team, and... I guess now it's nice to be known versus perhaps where we were a few years ago. I assume it's political correctness like the Springboks are now on the Springboks. No, <laughs> just, just a name, wasn't it? Just a name, yeah. Just a, just a name, I think. Yeah, I think it was just a name. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, no more questions from the floor, if that's, if that's okay. Um, <laughs> we, um, we've, all, we've all got dinner to go to somewhere. Um, what we ought to say is that um, uh, this year alone, 300,000 children um, through Chance to Shine will, will be delivered the Spirit of Cricket message. So uh, the, the nursery grounding, if you like, is there and continues apace as it has for a very long time. The ninth consecutive year, indeed, that MCC have worked with Chance to Shine and the spreading of that gospel. 
Um, uh, we had a fantastic day here, 600 children representing Chance to Shine schools all over the country. We're here 10 days ago. Um, uh, Roger was here and, and Derek and I hosted a fun event with these kids getting the chance to, to be here at this great place and to walk the hallowed turf and then to play on it afterwards and, and have a bit of fun. And, and their enthusiasm for cricket um, was very evident and actually very interesting uh, and, and exciting. A lot of the, the women's team were here. Charlotte Edwards was here amongst others. Um, we've also launched a competition. MCC and Charles to Shine launched a competition of shirts for the best cricket teacher in England and Wales, which is a good thing. And interestingly, this is led in support by, I'm told to say, by Phil Tuff, Tufnell. Um, we've been very honoured this evening. Um, but um, before I say goodbye, we have an even more special honour because um, Brendan has today been made a life, an honorary life member of MCC. Uh, and um, <laughs> Roger, and Roger is going to present him with his tie. Well done, Roger. The president presents Thank the you. new man. Oh. You've got to hold it. You may not wear it very Thank often. You. <laughs> Thank you very much, Roger. Please. Please. In, um, in, in Owen Morgan, we have a great, great, uh, not great, I mean, a, 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 t a very talented leader and batsman. And I feel that our, our one day game is in excellent hands. I really do. A beautiful talker. In Kumar Sangakara, we, we have now, I think we must put him in the pantheon, uh, along with any of the great, truly great players that have batted in cricket. Um, I meant to ask him about wicket keeping batting. We can't do everything. Um, it, right in the pantheon, in, in, in the Tendulkar, Lara. Ponting, Richards, um, Sober's pantheon of batting. Um, and in you, sir, tonight we've been challenged, we've been surprised, we've been entertained, we've been educated, uh, we've been stimulated, um, uh, and, and we've, we've found a side to cricket and, and its integrity and its dignity that we hadn't been fearful of, but we now can feel very confident of the sort of hands that it's in. Congratulations on a really special performance in front of us tonight. To all three of you, thank you very much. Thank you.